What does the artist have to do, right, to promote? I like that question. I would say before anything, the artist needs to understand that it it, it is it is an agreement. Let me give you an example. Um, I had a few I had a few times, a bunch of times actually. Artists would let me know that, hey man, I need this amount of money. Uh, this is how I'm gonna move. I'm like, all right, cool. But here are the criteria. Here are the things that I'm asking. You're gonna need to promote the event on your social media page. Hey man, you know what? I don't even use Instagram like that. I'm like, but. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's an agreement, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, it's an so, agreement. So you can't look at it only from your perspective and think, okay, I'm going to get the bag and then sh- I don't need to promote the show. Guess what? Because you promoting the event, even if you think that it's a show that's that has 50 people to 100 people, less than the amount of people you're capable of bringing, you never know how many of those 50 people are going to be your super fans, fans who are going to show up to every single one of your shows, fans who are going to be truly invested into what you have to offer. So right. It's 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 crucial for you to understand that. Make it a commitment to, you know, understand the agreement, understand what the promoter wants and what can be gained from both of it, from both uh, from, from both ends of the offer. Music promotion. Are you ready? What you look like? Like how you, how are you looking? It goes so much deeper than being that. Uh, put it like this: the introverted music producer or artist can make money, mm-hmm. but you're gonna make way more money if you're able to go out there and and really hit it. And so that's essentially what we're talking about today. Um, I thank everybody for joining us. Uh, if you end up watching this on a replay, look. We're here. We are talking to one person like we're talking to a million, you know, but you're here with us right now. We are thoroughly appreciative of you being here uh, with us today. And we've got some great content for you Uh, today. I'm finna shut up and I'm finna ask this guy, Max, all the things that he knows. So Max is about to give us all the keys uh, uh, to music promotion He's on the back end. He's literally about to give us all the keys. But before we do that, we have a segment called Book Bars. We're still- so we are in How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes, sir. Um, Mac, you wanna, Max, you want to go with your book bar first or, or, or you want me to go with it? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. So my book bar was, well, is at page 53. And for those of you who don't know, yeah, exactly, that's the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Powerful one. And it's the third paragraph, or we should say, or even second. It says, it is the individual who is not interested in his fellow men, who has the greatest difficulties in life and provides the greatest injury to others. It is from among such individuals that all human failures spring. And man, the reason why I thought about that that chapter, even that bar, so to speak, is because, you know, even since we're on the topic of music promotion and dealing with promoters as an emerging artist or as an emerging producer, it's always great to have a certain level of interest and understand that the people you're going to be working with are going to need your attention and are going to need more than just a check. You know, that t- that's the, the type of connection you could build with that individual could cost you a great amount of success. You can't oh, yeah. imagine. Oh yeah. Man, it's big bar, man. Got to got to show interest at all times. Yeah. Yeah, um Yeah, I mean, you take it like yeah, you get, you just got to show interest. I love that. Um my bar is from uh and it's, I feel like it's related to to today's topic. It's from part 2, uh chapter 1. It says do this and you will be welcome anywhere and it's from page 54 and it's talking about howard thurston which is some old dude uh on broadway or whatever like that but he was in uh says thurston was the acknowledged dean of magicians Mm -hmm. okay so this is probably back in like the 30s or something like that on broadway or whatever like that but here's the whole here's the whole kicker he was a complete beast at being a a a magician and selling out shows you know, because that's what he was, you know, that's what he was doing. It says Thurston had a genuine interest in people, right? He says this, 
about his method of success. He said this. <clears throat> he told me that every time he went on stage, he said to himself, I am grateful because these people come to see me. They make it possible for me to make my living in a very agreeable way. I'm going to give them the very best I possibly can. He declared he never stepped in front of the footlights without first saying to himself over and over and over, I love my audience. I love my audience. And that sounds mad ridiculous, but here goes the whole thing. Like words of affirmation, you know, like, like what we are is what we think about ourselves. You know, and if it is, again, if it really truly ends up being just about the bag, that's going to come out. Your, your fans are not going to want to, um, they're not going to want to be down with you. You know, they're not going to feel like they, they, they're a part of your journey. And that just means they're just, they're just not going to want to support you. Mm. You know, fans are, 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 are um, like, it's weird because fans, like, they want the artists that they're looking at or the music producer, they, they, they want you to kind of be like a, a little god to them at the same token they want certain levels of of vulnerability and accessibility you know and gratitude right so if you're not stepping on stage with the fact that like i'm appreciative of all these people i'm really trying to touch people in here with my music um you know music even you know for the music producers you know if you're not trying to like you know reach the artists that you're you know if you're not making music that is trying to be transformative you know, I'm just, this is just not the platform for you. Exactly. You know, I'll just be honest. Like, you know, we want to, we want to inspire people who want to inspire people. And that's just, that, that's just what it is. So that's our book bar for today. Um, that's a bar. Yeah. Major bar. Max, Max, we had it right in. We go, we going right on in. Um, so, let me see. How much do I know about you? Um, you are uh, a Canadian man, francophone, Montreal, been in the promotion game for over five years? Correct. Uh, and, okay, that's, that, that, that's, why, that's why I am real quick. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. Great. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Max Mupese. Um, like you said, I'm a Canadian man born in Canada. Well, I was born in Canada. My parents are from the Congo, Congo heritage. And, you know, I help emerging artists coordinate their talent and give them proper tools to flourish as professionals. Meaning I started off as a music promoter, uh, organizing events in a basement of a barbershop, man. When I started, it was even prior to, prior, prior to me even organizing an event or even knowing how to host or even whatnot, anything in that regard. I was mostly the type of individual who was at the door, the doorman mm -hmm. was taking all the names from people who were attending shows. And it was like an eight mile style of uh, people who was just going there to, to freestyle or even doing open mics, learning how to, right. to practice their skills and whatnot. So it was a showcase event. And from that day, I told myself, you know, I like the talent I hear. I even always had a, an ear or an eye for talent. People told me that from, from a mile, from time, from time. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity as something very serious. I'm going to make sure that I take the, the amount of money that's, that goes in the, in the case or whatnot serious. I'm going to do my job as it's seriously supposed to be done, like if I had an actual nine to five. And some days right. I would leave with zero, and some days I would leave with a couple of change. You know, I would say probably 10 to $15. It didn't really mm -hmm. matter to me. And month after month, we would organize these events. I would tell myself, you know what? I want to see myself organize something similar to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I had the chance to speak with the individuals who were organizing the events, learning how they would do it, learning how they would manage their money, how they would pay people. And I was like, okay, I, I feel like I could have, I could handle all of these uh, tasks. Right. And it took a few times for me to understand that I had it because uh, once, once in a while, the organizer of the showcases, would show up and tell me, hey, man, I'm going to be out for a couple of months. I need you to handle uh, I need you to handle the space. I need you to take care of the, the finances, Ooh. you know, get the, get the ice, get, make sure that you place the keys where they're supposed to be placed. And I was like, okay, man. What I'm keys? What keys? What keys? What, what are the keys? What are the keys? Uh, the keys to, to the venue. Or even oh, the to the venue. Yeah. Okay. 
Gotcha. And um, yeah, I told myself, okay, I, I know how to handle these tasks. And if I had even questions or concerns, I would have to call him and make sure that I know how to do it myself. So the first event I organized, I was hella nervous, like everyone would <laughs> definitely have to be. And, right. And I told myself, you know what, I got this. Even if I was nervous, I, I had those affirmations on my mind, like, okay, you know what, I, I got what it takes. Right. Yeah. Furthermore, I got the ice, everything was set up. I knew how many people would show up. Uh, I got a few phone calls. I was managing those calls. And that same event, I didn't know who was going to be the host. I called a person. I called the organizer. He's like, hey, man, you're going to host the event. I'm like, oh, shoot. I never hosted an event at all. You're going to host the event? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yo, I, why do they do that? Okay, yeah. And I've always, <laughs> I've always shied away from the attention. Like, as much as people see how, how, you know, they claim that I'm a great host or I could host pretty well. I was like, okay, man, I'm going to avoid being the type of host who's going to talk too much. I have, I'm going to have to verify what I say. I was, yeah, because I'm very self conscious. So I was like, okay, I'm going to repeat certain words. Why am I going to say mm. this? Like, okay, you no, know just do it. And once I started, I felt like my way of hosting was to have a conversation with the people I already knew in the crowd. Right. And it helped me throughout the process, throughout the whole right. uh, night. And I was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to talk to, I'm going to host but I'm going to keep my eyes on the ones who are paying attention the most. And, right. And even those who are kind of ice grilling me, I was using <laughs> that as an, I'm serious. That's right. What, that's one gem I would like to share with anyone who would like to host. Like anyone who ice grills you when you're, whenever you're hosting, who gives you negative vibe, connect with that type of individual. I always do that. How, well, okay. What, when you say connect with them, what do you mean connect with them? I mean, I mean like after the show or, or, or inside of the venue. Or you're talking to them. Yeah, when I'm talking to them, I make sure I find a way to open up with that. I, I make sure I find a way to make that person open up. Right. So, like, let's say if it's a type of individual, or even if it's a lady who's just in her corner, she she holds her bag and does not necessarily want to talk to people. I would, you know, I'd say a sentence, and I would look at that person and say, right. And if that person wouldn't respond, I would look oh. at her. You know what I mean? I would look wow. at her friend or whoever she's with. And that person would smile and I would say, got you. What's your name, by the way? Boom, boom. And then conversate with that person. And like, I did that on my first night. And I was surprised the way I did it. I was like, okay, wow, I, I got this. And Wow. Uh, yeah, man. Because I, I like to, to connect with all kinds of people. So that's that's what helped me. Wow. Like, that's um, that's very, very, very heavy. Like, you know, that's very heavy. Um, so what did you, when you... What were, what actually made you nervous? It's just like, it's like you just hadn't done it before or, you know, yeah. What actually made you nervous about it? Man, Did you not think that you had all the tools and stuff? The unknown, knowing that I could speak very well English, although when I'm in an environment where I know that it's predominantly English and if I say certain verbs, like I don't correct, I don't speak in a certain manner, then I may look like a fool, but I told myself, why would I even doubt my English or why would I even doubt the way I speak if I started speaking in English since I was probably like two years old, two years old. So, right. you know, those were the little insecurities I had and um, knowing that, okay, maybe people didn't know who I was and how serious they would take me for, for me being a host. And, you know, all, all of these thoughts were in my mind, were on my mind, but I know that for the most part, it was just a bunch of smoke screens that I was trying to create in my own mind, you know? Mm, okay. Okay. I'm just checking in. Uh, sure. uh, we are. Yeah. I actually, am just going to just say this. Uh, hey, Ron, Don, yo, appreciate you. We're going to open it up for questions and uh, questions and answers. Q and a, I think questions and answers Q and a, uh, towards the, uh, end of this, uh, live. So about the last 10 minutes, uh, the live, we're going to open it up for Q&A if you're still around. You know, we'd love to hear what you got to say. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are talking about time to promote. Max is the promotion guru. Max also helps a rising artist, you know. Max, tell them what you do really quickly, and then, we'll, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on real quick. Yes, so I help emerging artists coordinate their talent and give them the proper tools to flourish as professionals. If you don't know gotcha. what that means, meaning... That if you're an emerging artist and you're looking for 
a specific venue to perform on a consistent basis, then I could provide that service. If you're looking for a quote unquote manager, depending on what stage you are in your career, I could find a way to communicate with that manager because I have contacts and, uh, you know, I could help you get contracts, contacts and contacts for the most part. So, okay. Uh, that's my way. To All right. All right, I don't want to what's it called because I want to. I want to. We're gonna just show them that you're the expert, that you're that guy. Okay, so I had a couple questions that I had for Max. Um, and again, you guys, we're gonna open it up for Q and A. We're gonna try, again try something new. We're opening up for Q and A in about um, in about twenty minutes or so. So please have your questions like ready. Max is here to answer questions, but we're only gonna have it open for about ten minutes, and so it's first come first serve. Max, what is music promotion? What is music promotion and why do artists, why do a rising artists need to know how to promote themselves? Great why? question. Music promotion is simple as you are the type of individual as a promoter who is able to coordinate, organize, and put together an event and attract a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple as even if we look at the Nation of Islam, NOI, for those of you who don't know, uh, they're a great group. Shout outs to them too. You know, what they're able to do when they're in the streets and, and reach out to people with their magazines or even their journals is, you know, voice what they have going on. Talk about a certain event or a certain project that they're working on and gather as much people as they can to later, you know, bring them in a venue or bring them in a in any other in in, in a venue. I would say in an event for the most part. Okay. They would bring them in a venue where I would say in a part two and organize something, you know, make sure that the people are there for a reason. And once they're able to bring the people in that venue or that location, they could definitely let them know what's the purpose of them showing up at that place. So that's that's simple as organizing an event and uh, knowing what <clears throat> knowing what are the criterias whenever you, you put the, the show together or whatnot. Right. And why is it important for yeah. emerging artists to to promote themselves or even learn how to promote themselves? I would say number one is because you want to attract your core audience. You want to know how can you build a brand? How can you um, show that you're you're someone that could be taken seriously? So if you're able to promote, even if it's a single, a song, anything you've you've done in your past, then it shows that you have a certain level of of interest in what you're doing. You're showing that you're serious. So that's how people are going to eventually take you serious. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> and there's so many things to say about uh, why is it important and how is it important. But All right. know, the whole, you know, emerging artists or even emerging producers, creatives need to know that whenever you you take your, your craft seriously, uh, people will definitely take you seriously. So that's why it's important to, take, to know how to promote. Mm, yeah. Yeah, um, I think that on the back end, and this I could be, on the back end. It's like knowing how to, as a music producer, knowing how to um, craft a song, knowing how to mix, knowing how to master, so that when you're able to pass that 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 those tasks on, you actually know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't actually get got. You know, what I'm saying. I mean, that's like that's the most important thing. I mean, people, you know, it's sharks everywhere. You know. Like of course, our, you know you're you're a really great dude, really honest guy, and you're not a shark. But it's sharks everywhere, bro. I've seen so many like weird promoters. I don't know if anybody watches Atlanta, um, but like in like the first and second season, like um, Travis Gambino's character and the other the the rapper character, there was like this promoter of a show, and so they, they like they were just kind of coming up, and they were uh, like. Uh, like they were trying to find a promoter, and like it was funny because the promoter kept like dipping off into like little like weird places. He was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna pay you. I'm gonna pay you for coming out doing this." That and he kept dipping off into like little like oh, little, little places or whatever like that. It's just, uh, it's I, just I, funny. You yeah, go I like ahead. That you're saying that. I completely yeah. agree with you. I'll yeah. add uh, a few things to it. Just a small anecdote, a small story, is that uh, I had my one of my first shows, my third show actually organizing myself was with a guy from Toronto, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. He he got me. So we How did he get you? Oh, okay. We, Are you not gonna say no names? You not don't say no names. Don't say no names. I, I okay, don't right. even remember his name. I, I I made an effort to not even think about him for a long period of time. I <laughs> gave him, you know. 
Right on, know, right on. You know, get over that, that um, resentment or that, you know, that type of ill will feeling I had a, at a certain period of time because he left. Man, I wanted to see him after the show. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, agreed to, we agreed to organize the event together. What happened was that he's like, okay, yo, let's, let's communicate via social media. And I knew that he would show up in Montreal and do shows often. So that's how I took him serious. I didn't want to just do an event with anybody like that didn't necessarily know the city or people that did not know who he was. So then right. I, I reached out to him. I saw that he had something going on. He was able to collaborate with a few uh, promoters in the city. I was like, okay, let's organize the event. We ended up organizing the event. He was great at uh, reaching out to people too. Uh, we had 50-50 deal, whatnot. The, the day of the event, he didn't even tell me he had a bunch of other artists from Toronto who were going to show up. I was like, okay. I found it a bit fishy. So first thing he does <laughs> when he sees me, he's like, hey, Max, yo, what's going on? I'm good. I felt he was very anxious. He's like, man, yo, so what's going on? You, you, you got the money? I'm like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. And he's like, man, like, man, I think we should start breaking bread right now. We should start talking about Wait, before the event happened? Yeah. <laughs> So, how long about it? How long, how long will break the bread before the event happens? I'm I'm totally confused he's, about that. He's like, he's like, we should start talking about breaking bread. We should we should like put our money right now on the table. <laughs> we got. I'm like, okay. Sorry, go ahead. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just chill out, just chill out. He's like, yo, I'm telling you, it's gonna work, man. If we do it right now, I'm telling you, we need the money now. Like, we need to focus on how much we're gonna pay these artists. And right. I'm like, you know, I came up straight up, and I'm. And I'm, and I'm going to be very honest with you. This is how we're going to do it. A, B, C, done. And he's like, okay, okay. And then I was moving around the venue, looking at the tables, making sure everything was set up. He comes back, he, and he's with his girl. He's like, man, now I think I'm about to leave and come back to the bank because I need to make sure that the money's straight. I'm like, sounds crazy. Just make sure you do you. And I, I didn't think about emergency funds for that event. Like shoot. Emergency funds. Whoa, hold yeah, on. That's a gem right there. Hold on. Emergency fund. We won't even talk about that right now. Okay. Emergency fund. Then, wow. Yeah. I never thought I hold up. I never would have thought about emergency funds. I my uh in my family we've got an emergency fund or like the first part is setting up an emergency fund of at least like a thousand dollars and then you and then you go you you know, you continuously go up up up, up to there. You know what I'm saying? But I never thought about an emergency fund. Yeah. As a promoter, wow, that's crazy. Go ahead. Yeah, man. So then he ends up saying, "Okay, I'm coming back." Boop, disappears. I'm like, "Okay." And then I started seeing a bunch of faces I didn't know. That's when I felt the energy. I was like, "Okay, these guys are from Toronto, right?" And like, and they, you know, they ice grilling. They're all, they're all here. You know, they're amped. You could tell that they, they're, they're up to something. And luckily, you know, I started. Ch what I, one thing I always did was that. Every person that shows up to the event, I talk to them. First thing, I tell them, like, hey, what's going on? My name's Max. I'm organizing the event. Have a seat. This is what's going to happen. Like, okay. Right. Cool. So that's how I approached them. But I felt their energy was still like, man, I'm, I'm not trying to talk to you. I don't know you. I'm like, okay, cool. So I let it slide for a bit. And I, I ended up calling him. No answer. I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Call. No answer. I'm like, oh, right. okay. <laughs> but I, I had a feeling that it was there was something missing when we were talking at the beginning. That's when I knew he didn't have the money and he just left. I was like, okay, and I, did, I had to think about how much I had to pay every artist who showed up. Like, all right, shoot. That's when I started making a few phone calls for people who were gonna help me out. I'm like, okay, damn, shoot. My sister's always on point. I ended up sh uh, chopping it up with her. She gave me a few advice. She's like, no, uh, just you know, be be yourself. Let them know what's going on. I'm like, all right, cool. Hang up. And then we are we started organizing the event. Everything went well. Those guys from Toronto showed up. Uh, they came to me towards me. They're like, "Oh, man, what's going on? You, you know where where the boy, you know, such and such is?" I'm like, "No, I have no clue. He just disappeared. I didn't know he was going to bring you guys." And I had to tell them straight up. I was like, "Man, I don't know, but at the end of the day, something's going to have to happen. You guys are going to have to show up with the bread or whatnot." I'm like, "Man." I can't promise you anything, but what I could promise you is a stage performance and definitely shout you out and whatnot. And then they started performing. So just These are the guys from Toronto. Yeah. Okay. So what I what I like to do just to make people comfortable, uh, when I feel that they're tense towards when whenever they perform, is that once they're done the performance, I take the mic and I start talking to, to that artist like, 
ask them questions, man. Tell them who you are, where you're from, what inspired you to make music. And right. the artist started to open up. And after his performance, he started to cool down a little bit. He's, he talked to me. I, I told him, look, listen, it's my first time organizing an event with that individual. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen the same way. But if you have anything you would like to uh, get out of this, like you know, if there's anything you would definitely like to, you know, you know um, connect with after the show or whatnot, I could help. Connect with you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like if any, if you're looking for anything, I could definitely bring that to the table. But I'll definitely, I'll let you know what I could add, not more. You know, just keep it. You're safe. a negotiator. You're a negotiator. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, cool. He he liked it. Most of his people liked it too. I made sure that I gave him a few drinks, made it cool. And yeah. But for the rest, I'll tell you a lot of people. I I think at the end of the event, I probably left for like less than less than twenty dollars. I made sure I paid everybody. Wow. Man, I, I swear. Yeah, wow. It's, it's That's crazy. honorable, man. It, it's, you know, I just wanted to make sure I'm a, I was a man of my word. And if, even if I never met these people, they showed up once, they're never going to come back. As long as they knew that I was in on the same frequency of the, of, of the type of individual, of, of uh, the other person that I was doing business with, then that was cool. Wow. So... This is like almost turning into like chronicles of a mu of a music uh, promoter, you know. <laughs> it's so like many stories. There's so many stories. Like you could have your own like R. Kelly's trapped in a closet. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, and first is it? Anyways, so what? That's awesome. Um, what do promoters like you? Right? What do promoters like you look for in artists and music producers? Man, a lot of things. I would say uh, consistency, professionalism is... Wait, wait, wait. Hold up, hold up. Break that. Break that down. We're not just going to run past that. What is consistency? Consistency consistent, in what? Consistent body of work. If you're able to release, let's say you have a single every week, every month, but that hits big, that has a, a certain level of buzz or anything. But the word buzz is the key word in every mm -hmm. single um, event you want to organize or any other right. artist you're looking for. So if you're an artist that's able to gain a mass amount of attention, then it's a plus for everything you do. And um, yeah, just make sure that you're consistent with the body of work. If you're able to do a lot of featurings with from art with artists from different genres, or even if you're able to do consistent, if you're able to to uh, collaborate with different producers. Like, if your name is out there for the most part and people keep talking about you, that's very important. Um, yeah. So where – okay, so so for the for the arising artists, right? Right. Because that's, that, that's what we're working on. The arising artists – so they're working on getting a body of work together to attract somebody, to attract a music promoter like yourself first, right? They're working to get a, a, a body of work together. Right. Uh, they're doing collabs, you know, that make that make sense and add to their body of work that's good. Um, okay. Profession okay. Professionalism. Okay. What a, professionalism. Professionalism. Very, very important. Like, the amount of DMs I get just, hey, listen to my music. I'm like, man, you know, it's, I'm not going to listen to it the way you want me to listen to it. It's, it's imperative for you to have the know-how to write a proper email. Like, even if you don't know how to structure it or you have no clue, you could look it up right. on Google, how to write a professional email. Boom, they're going to give you a template. You take that template, copy and paste it, erase the person's name or the person's uh, organization, and you can send it to a bunch of promoters, uh, even booking, prom uh, booking agents or whatnot, anybody who has a... Skill but do not, but do not put to whom it concerns. Okay, listen. <laughs> do your due diligence, and if you reach out, if you reached out to Max or any other promoters and things like that, y'all, do your due diligence and say, "Hey, Max, don't say dear who it concerns." Okay, because that's like the that's the biggest way to know that that email is a uh, uh, what do you call it? It's a um, it's a it's a. Yeah, it's a template or copy, you know, yeah. or blast email, you know, like to whom it concerns will not get on top of people's radar. They they literally know people love their name. I think that we talked about, I think that we talked about knowing 
you know, knowing somebody's name and things like that, the sweetest sound, uh, and, and how to win friends and influence people, the sweetest sound to a person is their actual name, exactly. you know? So when you approach me, say, you know, Maddie the chef, you know, or if you meet me outside my tea, or Max, you know, uh, but if you're not saying those things, like, you know, to whom it concerns is an immediate, like, I'm about to, like, immediately, like, toss this in the trash. Trash. Mm. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, you could definitely do the, uh, you can definitely do the, um, the blast email idea, but mm -hmm. it needs to be finesse so it sounds personal. Yes. And so it might actually take some, some good time to just make sure that you personalize that uh, for uh, when you're trying to reach out to, to yes. us. I uh, appreciate that. Okay. So, um, I got a bunch of questions for you, bro. Uh, okay. What are two ways to effectively promote a show? I'm just throwing them out at you, okay? We showed that you're the expert today, so I'm, I'm, I'm throwing out the questions. We're not prepping. Let's go. Absolutely. What are two ways? Yeah. Two ways, most important, most important way for you to promote a show as a promoter or even if you're a, a creative who would, who wants to promote your own show, the most the most important effective way is to know what what you have in plan what you have in plan what's your game plan, making sure right. that you know exactly what are the details for the event, uh, how many people you want to reach out to, uh, what where do you want your event to be, because you have to remember also it's a numbers game. So if you're able to reach out to let's say uh, 200 people then I could probably guarantee you that less than 40 people are going to show up. Mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. You know, you just got to make sure that you have... You said 200, you said less than 40, so that's like 10%. Exactly. Right, okay. And as long as you have that game plan set up and you know what exactly you want the show to be like or even what are the details for the event, then uh, you're on a good track. You're on the right path. You're on a good track. Another thing is to have a basic budget breaking down. If you have a budget and you know how much you're going to be able to spend, that's the most important thing because you're going to have to remember every single person that's going to show up to your event is not going to be there for free. <clears throat> Even if you want to reach out to interns after a certain period of time, they're going to wonder, Hey man, is there a possibility for me to get paid? Are you going to start doing something that's going to be a lot more beneficial to me? So uh, as long as you have, a basic uh, budget breakdown and a game plan for the event, then uh, you're on the right track and you know where to go from there. Awesome. Awesome. A budget breakdown. Yo, these are really, really, really crucial things. I, I hope that folks who are watching, I hope the folks who are watching on the replay, yo, like here goes the game right here. Um, what I want to just, okay. So I'm just going through my notes, going through my notes. Uh, first off again, or, Max, you're doing an excellent job, you know, with Appreciate these things it. I'm just tossing out at you, uh, showing your expertise. Okay, what does the artist have to do to promote a show? So I know that there's a promoter mm -hmm. involved. What is the artist's uh, job or and or music producer? I mean, you know, you know music producer doing a what, – what the music producers are going to be doing is most likely kind of like beat showcases. Um, you know, you might even be getting together – with an artist or with a couple artists uh, and just, you know, like doing a showcase, doing a show. So this is not like, this is not limited to artists and things yeah. like that. Right. You know, Excellent. right. Okay. Exactly. So go for it. Yeah. I like that. Question. What does the artist have to do? Right. To promote. I like that question. I would say before anything, the artist needs to understand that it, it, it is, it is an agreement. If you're an artist and you view uh, the quote-unquote agreement as a just a paycheck and not an opportunity to you know, develop a relationship with that promoter, then you're not necessarily you're not necessarily going to take every detail of the contract or every agreement, everything you guys talked about seriously. Let's say the promoter lets you know, hey man, I need you to promote the event, then. If you're not like as as long as you look at it from your own eyes and your own perspective, right? You're not gonna look at it from a perspective as a even win. So it's important before anything else to understand that um, you gotta take this agreement seriously. You gotta make sure that 
Uh, you listen to what the promoter wants as much as the promoter, the promoter is going to listen to what you want. So let me give you an example. Um, I had a few, I had a few times, a bunch of times, actually artists would let me know that, Hey man, I need this amount of money. Uh, this is how I'm going to move. I'm like, all right, cool. But here are the criterias. Here are the things that I'm asking. You're going to need to promote the event on your social media page. Hey man, you know what? I don't even use Instagram like that. I'm like, but <laughs> it's an agreement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's an so, agreement. So you can't look at it only from your perspective and think, okay, I'm going to get the bag and then I don't need to promote the show. Guess what? Because you promoting the event, even if you think that it's a show that's that has 50 people to 100 people, less than the amount of people you're capable of bringing, you never know how many of those 50 people are going to be your super fans, fans who are going to show up to every single one of your shows, fans who are going to be truly invested into what you have to offer. So right. it's, it's, it's crucial for you to understand that make it a commitment to you know, understand the agreement, understand what the promoter wants and what can be gained from both of it, from both, uh, from, from both ends of the offer. Wow. Um, yeah, I think that that's, I think that knowing the back end, you know, actually helps artists and music producers, you know, like, again, know what, know what you're looking for. It reminds me of people who, um, Ash Cash, if anybody watches uh, Earn Your Leisure, mm. um, I don't, yeah, I think Ash Cash was on a Social Proof podcast, uh, but he, because he, like, works with the banks, um, he knows what the banks are looking for, or he, because he worked at the bank, he knows what the banks are looking for, and so that's so important because you're talking somebody's language, right, and so if artists and music producers, you know, if we, uh, if you all know what the promoters are looking for, it's going to be a lot easier. You guys are working together at the end of the day, trying to make an awesome event for fans, for people to enjoy themselves, and then you end up getting the bag at the end of the day. I think that that's the most important important part of it. You know, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's it. You got it. Right. Definitely. Right. So, um, all right. I mean, like I said, I got a lot of more questions than even from this. Okay, so... Okay, how much can an artist get paid on average from a venue, on average? It's a good question. On average, yeah. it could be close to 250 to 500. You know, usually the answer you're always going to get is it depends. But yeah. for the most part, a lot of venues, even clubs sometimes, because clubs are also, they also have their own promoters or they could be the promoters themselves. Is that, is that they're going to break it down in percentages. So they're going to look at the amount of people you're going to be, you're going to, you're, you're capable of attracting for the show and going to pay you based on the amount of people you're going to bring. So if you're able to bring, let's say, um, 50 people for an event and you're, you're an upcoming artist, you don't necessarily have a certain amount of buzz, then they're going to be, they could give you 50% or even 40%. Um, off the of what, the door or like, uh, yeah, the door? Yeah, it could okay. be the door or even the tape. The door, I would say more or less, but it would have to go on, yeah, the, the amount of people you have, the, the amount of people you, because they would have to consider every single person that shows up to the event. But it depends on the promoters and depends on um, how they, they look at your music and how they look at your brand. So I'm sure that you, um, inside of what you do, you can break down, two artists and music producers actually how to attract more more yeah. people, right? That's what you said, right? Absolutely. Um, okay, so you said 200 to 500. Uh, that's four show. You know, if you can do four shows one time, uh, this is literally one time um, a week, a weekend. That's mm -hmm. four shows. That's $2,000 an e uh, extra a month. Uh, $24,000 extra a year. Um, on average from doing uh, shows. So people need to know a little bit more about how to how to do this stuff. So connecting with you is definitely like a good idea. Yes? Absolutely. All right. So how can the artists learn more about what you do and and again, how they can attract promoters, 
how they can be ready, all the like little ins and outs. Because you told me, you told us a lot of a, a lot of things today, which just is just just like, oh wow, like I didn't even think about some of these things, Max. You know, just absolutely brilliant. You know, but how are people going to be able to to get in touch with you and stuff like that? You could actually email me. My email is in the bio of my Instagram, globalsoundsent at gmail.com. Another thing is you could uh, DM. If you DM me, DM me a simple word like uh, ready, and I'll be able to to chit-chat with that person and uh, chop it up in more, a a little bit more. (laughs) What do we get when, um, what what, what happens when we DM you ready? Um, What happens? What's the next process after that? So as soon as you DM me the word ready, I could definitely send you the link of my uh, my new ebook called How to Attract Gigs as an Emerging Artist, mm-hmm. A Guide to Position Yourself in a New Digital Entertainment Economy. And that book is very dope. I'm telling you right now, you're not even going to worry about anything. The, the amount of dollars you're going to have to spend. or I look at it as an investment. You could look at it that way, too. Um, so, yeah, once you're able to purchase that book, you can comment the word ready on my Instagram. I'll be able to give you a 20 minute consultation uh, with the fact that you purchased the book. Right. And even before that, I could have a, a, sh- a chit chat, a small conversation, but not necessarily a full 20 minute, con- uh, 20 minute consultation. Okay. That chit okay. chat simply be a few questions or uh, talk to you a little bit, but we could take it to a point where, uh, you know, we could have a consultation and, uh, look at your game plan and tell you where you are and how you could get a little bit better and whatnot. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking at the live right now. Uh, Hair on the Don, are you still there? Hair on the Don, are you still there? Shoot. I know that he was trying to reach out. Um, I don't know if he's still there. But, yo, like, yeah, we asked – a lot of questions today uh and you answered all of them okay i want you to know that like that i am like a thousand times more smarter in terms of what promoters like are looking for than i was what 46 minutes ago (laughs) you know so i thoroughly appreciate you know i mean you're the co-host and stuff like that but you know i thoroughly appreciate you spending your time talking uh to me and to everybody out there who is on the live, everybody who is joining on the, who's going to join on the replay. Uh, we get a lot of like views on the replay. So that's just what it, it ends up being. And that's cool. People are doing stuff. It's 4th of July. Uh, but again, 4th of July is not a, you know, it's not a day to just chill, you know, and if you are chilling, trust and believe somebody in your same lane and market is like, you hey, listen, I got to get it, mm-hmm. you know? So, Somebody else is working, okay? So you might as well say, listen, I'm going to enjoy myself. Uh, I'm talking about 4th of July in the States. Obviously, you know, Canada, it's a little bit different. But, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself, but I'm actually going to, like, maybe I enjoy myself for a couple hours today. Maybe I don't enjoy myself for the whole day. Mm. Maybe I figure out what action item I'm going to take from this live and implement. Implementation is the biggest, like, is the biggest difference between somebody who takes a course and somebody, you know, between two people who actually take a course, who's going to actually implement? Hey, isn't it less than seven, seven percent execute? (laughs) Right, bro. 95 out of 95 percent of the people who take courses, five percent of the people finish the course. And if it's five percent of the people who finish the course, how many people actually execute? I'd like to say maybe 1%, one or two. Hmm. That's what makes people the outliers. Go ahead. Absolutely. And I want to go back to your first question. I like your first question when you said, uh, uh, why is it important for emerging artists to, or even emerging creatives to organize their own events or promote their their own events? Right. Um, And uh, you gave a great answer because you want to to avoid any kind of scams or uh, any individual who has that type of energy. And even if, let's say, you're, you're an upcoming artist and you don't know exactly how, it, how the game is, is being played, who are the movers and shakers, yeah. how to avoid any you know, scams or scam artists, it's important to have a notion of uh, discernment or even yes. learn and, and really look at all kinds of social proof. 
if you have someone on your Instagram or even on your uh, Facebook who's a promoter, look at who they're following and who who's following them. If they're getting any positive feedbacks, if they're getting um, any shout outs, if yes. thorough people, the ones that you know most people look at as thorough. Uh, are giving them are vouching for them so that's very important all of these clues will definitely let you know okay yeah it's worth uh, doing business with that individual oh that's heavy um and i'm just putting in a chat uh do your homework do your homework on the promoter mm. yo because again we're not necessarily we're not talking to promoters right now Max, you're a promoter, but we're not really talking to promoters. We're actually talking to emerging artists and emerging music producers. Mm -hmm. Okay, you all are the demographic that we're that we're trying to work with. That we are not trying to work with. Excuse me. That's 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 a <laughs> a, a, a negative phrase that we are actually working with. Yeah, trying. Okay. Is... Right. Trying is not is not what's up. Hey, Ron and Don, yo, look, we're about to check out. I wanted to uh, add you in because you had a question. You ready? Let's make it happen. Ready to hop on? Well, that's dope. You're actually adding a... Uh... Oh, wow. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to hop in. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to have his brother go live. Let's, let's go. Let's get it. That's powerful. Hey, Ronald, how you doing, bro? Yo, what's good, man? What's going on? What's going down? Yeah, what's going I'm down? I what the hell is wrong with this. Oh, there you go. Man, I was actually, um, I got uh, Max. I got Max um, IG. I was actually just writing it down. I was just trying to multitask. Nah, like, it's, oh, can you see me? Yeah. We can see you, bro. We can oh, see you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I was I was saying um everything that y'all was saying exactly what I'm looking for because see my thing is I get I get a lot of attention but it's because I'm around these rappers because I work with a um a video team and we do videos for a lot of these rappers so it's like mm -hmm. a lot of ways to promote myself so I'm just trying to get started my boy he was ahead of me and his. He just started with his shit, and you know what I'm saying? Being that he's around a lot of rappers, and he get a lot of exposure. He did a feature with um, Um P, is a rapper from from Bronx, mm -hmm. and now and then he did for his project, he did a video he just released. But he signed to a label, so he gets a lot of back. You know, I don't have no label behind me. Okay. So, Are you a rapper? Yeah. Okay, you're a rapper. Um, Go for it. Go for it. Go, go for it, Max. Yeah, that's great. I mean, have you ever thought about doing your own shows? Yeah, <laughs> I only I, like the first show I did, but it was for, it was in Brooklyn. It was for um, it was for promotion. Like they do videos. I can't even remember the name of it. Um, pretty much what they do is they, you book, you get your show, and they 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 go all around tour and all around the world. And yes, sir. I think. I think you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like 2020, 2019. Sure. Okay, I t go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Max. Yeah, I was going to ask you if there's any thorough promoters uh, in your region that you, you deal with or you're talking to on a consistent basis. No, no. I haven't really, I haven't really reached out yet because I was too busy making the music because I, I realized you got to do everything by, like, step by step. At the, just like what y'all was talking about, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm making sure my music is mastered. Because I did release a project on all platforms, but you can tell some of the music wasn't properly mixed, and some of it wasn't, you know what I mean? So I learned my lesson from that. Because you can let people know the music, but it will really tear them down a little they'd be like yo you, you could spit that shit should have been i mean you're a game fans but it's still unprofessional mm, right so you actually know the you actually know the, the value of professionalism and things like that i think that that's the first thing <laughs> yes i yeah. seen because because I, I actually seen people like make it so i'm not someone that i, I seen it i mean it just happened like my boy his, his fucking video is almost 100 thousand views and it's right on it's chris and so how is how is your I, I'm I'm sorry how is your stage performance? 
Mm, Stage question. performance, I was very impressed because um, I actually was taught to perform before I perform and actually rehearse. I think that's right. very important because I knew exactly what to do. And right. it was more like, one thing I do remember is always like making sure you have a catchy hook, even mm. if they don't know you. If they know the hook, they know you. And you take your wrist. The, the stage wrist is pulling the mic out for people to. Mm. Now I did that wrist, and I got you know I got what I got. I was, you know the security was even like I like that song, so I was very very excited. But the 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 two mistakes that I never ever 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 do again because on the stage like being in a rock boxing room, it's <laughs> the temperature. It, everything is different. <laughs> I would never. I know that. I would never ever ever be drunk again. Yo, them God. yo, them lights, man. Them lights and drinking is a whole three, ball game. Three. Yeah, yeah, it, it, man. <laughs> 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 and I had to wait. I didn't know I had to wait so long. So I'm sitting here being cool with the bottle, and I'm just was retarded. That was a lesson learned. Yo, yo, hell on. Let me tell you. Let me tell you one thing. One thing that I realized about fifty. Right, I read this in. Maybe Rolling Stones magazine or something like that. If you you might have heard this, Fifty was like, yo, when he was on stage, he had the bottle of Hennessy and he had the blunt, right? Fifty was like, he was on stage, but he was like, yeah, this, this was iced tea. Yeah, oh, this was iced shit. tea, and the blunt was just tobacco. But what I did was I sold everybody that I drink and I smoke. He was like, I don't. He's like, I don't smoke uh -huh. and I very rarely drink. Every one of them, every time, because why? Because when you're on stage, yo, like you're actually at work, like you're actually at work. You know, the the after party potentially is is where you relax and and not even not even in the like, let's say you at the uh, like you're at the bit like you're at the after party or the venue or whatever like that. You're doing like a walkthrough or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not even a place where you like relax and chill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you relax and chill at the legit after party at somebody's house. You know, all the cameras are put away and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that. but that's... Yeah, I learned that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all. Again, like I said, like, we forget that that we're at work. Word. You know, we forget that we're at work. And and this this is our job that, that feels so much better than, than punching in the clock. Some of us got, you know, still, you know, got nine to fives. Some of us got six to tens and whatnot. And so this is still a job, but... Yo, man, this job way better than like, you know, being at the fire at McDonald's or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? So we treat it as such, you know? Right. Yeah. I That's a heavy that lesson, hallway. bro. Absolutely. I can tell you how I, I learned that the hallway, even in the studio, I used to do when I was like in my early 20s, like 21, 22. I used to be in there fucked up. You know, you used to be thinking yeah. that, you know, you hear Lil Wayne, like, oh, shoot, Lil Wayne, he sound better when he drunk. Let me right. Go. You on the lean, right. <laughs> Right, right, right. You know, you like he's slipping in your words. The the uh the the producer, he done fell asleep in the studio. Oh, uh oh, you ready? Uh, he and I used to be like, I used to be like, whoa, why is he sleeping? Cause you taking too long. <laughs> Cause you taking too long. Look, here go, go the whole thing. Lot. Here go the whole thing. It's like, like you ever y'all ever watch kung fu movies with like the drunken master and stuff like that? You know, he like he got the drunk style, right? You know, so. That guy is a master at what he's doing already. If you're not already a master at what you're doing, I say, I say relax a little bit. But if you're not already a master, you cannot even afford to go in there, you know, uh, drunk or, or, or high or anything because you got to get your stuff to the people. And that's what you got to realize as the artist is that your audience, your fans, they need to hear you clear and clear, like they need to hear you clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, and let me tell you, not to cut you off, that's why I pushed back my, um, I was just dropping the EP. I just was doing so good promoting it, and I just pulled it off because that's so important to me, man. I can't, like, you can't have that type of, like, you like, I go back to, like, 50 Cent, um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Most people, yeah. oh, heavy. the most importance about that is not what he's saying, it's not the... It's the motherfucking Drake beats and the clarity of, oh, my. You can hear, it's like you're in a movie. And I, I, I cherish that so much. And I hear it now with some of the, but nowadays, see, I test myself. So I had a track that's like this dude, right? He made it for me. Uh, he's in uh, France. 
and I met him through Clubhouse. So he right. let me do some of his beats. So, oh my God, I I I, pl- I put it in there and I put it in one of the rooms that was like you know, hear your music. Most of the dudes, I was like two three people judged it. They were more like, they gave it a high number, but the other people was more like. Because they like the beat more than the track. <laughs> they mm-hmm. like the beat more than when I That happens, yeah. So when I thought about it, I'm like, because it wasn't well mastered and it wasn't, you know, well mixed. So yeah. that's, that was another mistake. So now, um, as I, like, you know, venture out, I'm going to, you know, my boy, he does good with mastering. And I, and I downloaded E Master to master your tracks. It helps mm-hmm. mastering. But I realized that helps master well mixed down tracks so it's always something so that's why i'm like man what i learned from doing boxing is it's forever like it's never enough so you can so it's never good to rush yourself and constantly improving discipline. constantly improving would you say yeah that? so yeah. I, what i did was i took a break off of music when i was young i went to boxing so now i'm using the same discipline from boxing into the music and oh, it got me yeah. around rappers that I never thought I'd see. Yes. And I got just, I did the same discipline. I just said to myself, like, when, before my friend died, I was like, you know what? I bet if I do the same thing I did to boxing, I do the music. Because when I did the boxing, I got close to Floyd. I um I sparred with a couple of pros. Uh, you know what I mean? I went to the the fight events. I was, like, right there. I had, like, a little tiny clip on, um on the, <laughs> it was a, uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Average Landy Lord. That was like years ago. But anyway, <laughs> that's how you I in the fight. I, I mean, you you were you were on the uh, on the ticket? No, on the uh, on the show. The uh, what is it called? The sports. You know the the all access. All access. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it just shows like. But anyway, so so after that, I just conquered. Like I try to get back with the music, and I put the same energy and discipline. And next thing you know, I'm with a video director who's around Dayton. talk to him yeah fucking california and beverly hills i never even been there i'm like i'm i'm seeing like legendary shoot rest in peace dmx i seen dmx come out the liquor store and i'm like shoot. looking at like what the hell you know what i'm saying j cole was right in front of me looking at me like this i didn't even know who he was i respect that man yo i didn't mm-hmm. even know who j cole was because he was just looking so normal I didn't know until he moved his head. <laughs> until like, oh, that was just, yeah. Damn. And the security was right there the whole time. I just didn't. I thought he was with Dave. I don't know. And then he said, "Yo, what up?" And it was just like, "Oh my god!" And he was just looking at me like, "Who the fuck are you?" And if somebody looks at you like, "Who the fuck are you?" You best believe you're somebody. You just have to get it out. You just have wow. To, you you know it's there. You just gotta bring it out. And sometimes my problem was when. I was around them. I I froze and didn't even notice I froze. It's like you ever. That's the worst thing as a man because mm-hmm. sometimes when we're younger we can remember and see how we are. We always look in the mirror, but sometimes as men when we reach over twenty five, we can be depressed and miserable on our face, but in the inside we'd be like, "Yo, yeah," you know what I'm saying. But on my face at that time, it showed that I was nervous. And yeah, I was very upset at myself. I was like, what? I started looking in the mirror again. <laughs> how do you? How did you? Uh, how did you? Uh, how did you bounce back from that time? And then, and then we got to, and then we got to, we we got to, we got to run. Um, we got to run too. Yeah. But tell us how you bounce back from that time, because that's really important. Like, I appreciate um, you sharing your sharing your story, man. Everything is just believing yourself. I was just. I got, I just I just had uh, Corona. I was just sick. I was just the last thing I did was on my IG. I was sick. So like, Corona's a real thing, huh? Mm. I, to be honest, I don't. I look, bro. I don't even want to talk about because I still don't believe it. Because I'm okay. Scared. I don't. Right. Even, I, don't I, I feel don't, you. I feel you. I feel you. I don't even feel. I didn't. I didn't have problem breathing. I want to make fun of nobody who was sick, but I didn't have no problem they had. To me, he was I good. A fever, and they just lied and said Corona. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's tough, man. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But bro. what I was saying was, I I was just at Jada Kiss and Benny the Butcher and um Styles P. It was for um, it was for um what's his name um Moxburg Moxburg. Mm-hmm. It was uh for for video shooting Yonkers and I had a great time over there. It was a lot of people. 
I met a lot of rappers, a lot of. So my thing is more important when you uh when you network. But now it's time for me to get my music because my boy did the same thing I did and he networked. I mean, and he did the music and he got, you know, so it's like I'm being seen, but I'm not, I got to put the work to it. You got to run a play. Now that I'm putting the work to it, I need management because I'm like, I asked my boy, I'm like, yo, let me ask you because I don't like to be known. So I'm like, yo, let me ask you, uh, because I promote myself, I'm doing it myself. So I'm like, yo, you getting called to kind of help. And he said, yeah, I got to manage it. So of I course. Said, you never, he said, I was like, you never told me. Who's, he's like, yo, you, you really thought I was doing it for myself? I said, yeah. No. Because he's good at it. He was like, no, I had a fucking manager. But I thought that he, he was just, because he signed to a label, I thought they were just doing it. He said, no, he was doing it himself and he had his own manager. Mm hmm. No. So, That's what it is. That's I'm what trying, it is. So, well, what I want you to do is, I want you to, again, DM Max. Yeah. Um, DMX, if you Max, uh, DMX, Max is gonna give you, uh, gonna, what'd you, what'd you promise us, uh, uh, uh Max? Because Hair yeah. on the Dog is actually really serious, so let's, yeah, let's you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, once you get a chance to DM me the word ready or whatnot, I'll definitely send you the link of my ebook, How to, how to attract gigs as an emerging artist. And I'll give you at least oh. twenty to thirty minute consultation and just chop it up with you. Right, yeah, I appreciate that. That's yes, yeah. nice love. Yeah, oh. so we're gonna do that. Um, we're gonna do that. And again, like you just, you already said it, man. It's, it's you got to run the play the same way as you was doing the boxing. Um, I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, for, it's, it's yeah I appreciate you for chiming in, bro. I appreciate you for chiming in. Um, we have to run. Wow. We gotta run. Uh, it was <laughs> it was an awesome uh, soundboard Sundays. Um, my guy here around the dawn, man. Oh, you know, came on in with us. Yes, sir. You want to say one more thing? Definitely. No, I said I'm definitely going to um, make sure I follow. Um, what is it called? The notifications where every time you go on, I, I get the link. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. EST, we are on here trying to get. We are on here giving music producers a rising music producers, and a rising artist, the game, okay, that we can give to you. We're giving you all the what's and the why's. We've got the answer to the how's, and you got to link up, you know? If you want to... Oh, where where y'all from, by the way? I'm from New York. I'm from... Go ahead. Go, yeah, go for it, Max. Montreal. I'm like six hours away. And I'm uh, I'm in I'm in NC by way of D.C. I'm born and raised Washington, D.C. Oh, you right there, too? I got family. Wow. Right, uh, yes, sir. Right, yes, sir. Right there, sure. I want to see you. Um, I want to see you uh, take some of these things because Max gave all these gems. I want to see you take some of these things, Hair on a Don, and nice. legit implement nice. because nice. that's what we talked about today. Was is there's so much information that what's the one thing that you're going to implement today? Mm. You know, I think the one thing that you can implement is 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 getting in contact with Max. Getting that ebook together and saying, "Okay, I'm getting, I'm very clear about what I want to do," because the clarity is going to actually set you, it's going to actually set you apart. Okay. Yeah, so, guys, you. if you guys have enjoyed what it is, please share this. If you're watching this on the replay, um, again, we are very appreciative that you took your time, spending the time with us. Thank you so much, Hair Ronda Don, for chiming no in, giving people some of these gems because you're actually out there doing it. Uh, uh, and it's yes. so important, you know, to do that. Um, Soundboard Sunday, you all tap on in. Click that notification bell. And again, we're going to keep providing that value for you. Okay? Peace. Oh, appreciate it. I'm going to log in. I'm going to uh, tap in right out. Peace. Uh, love.